If you've ever watched multiple early Keystone productions, you may have found yourself getting a sense of deja vu. The storylines, characters, gags, and situations might feel familiar, as if they're being recycled over and over again. To give you a bit of context, the Keystone Film Company, formed in 1912 under the direction of co-founder Max Sennett, produced weekly films that were made available to the public, many of which took on a uniform narrative structure. Douglas Riblet states that, quote, Keystone quickly developed a highly distinctive, popular, and influential style of comedy, end quote. So what exactly made these comedies distinctive to Keystone? In this video essay, I'll explore how early Keystone comedies followed similar narrative patterns by employing common character tropes. First off, most of Keystone's films fall under the genre of farce comedy. Farce is defined by the Encyclopedia Britannica as a quote, comic dramatic piece that uses highly improbable situations, stereotyped characters, extravagant exaggeration, and violent horseplay, end quote. While all of these traits are true and can be evidenced in these films, my focus will fall specifically on stereotyped characters for the purpose of this video. Let's take a look at the types of characters employed in A Grocery Clerk's Romance and The Water Nymph. In these two shorts, the narrative centers on a male figure vying for the love of a woman. Romance is the driving narrative force and character motive in many Keystone comedies, the pursuit of which is the basis for much of the action and jokes. In regard to character archetypes, a recurrent trope that is seen across these two examples is the lovesick man, or in other words, the man who persistently chases after women already committed to another relationship. In a grocery clerk's romance, this is evidenced through his faithfulness to a married woman, and in the water nymph, his unfaithfulness to a woman. The husband is only devoted to his wife when he is quote-unquote locked in. Another character trope that we might see is the rejected suitor as the male antagonist, a character that has a romantic attachment to the female protagonist but that has been rejected by her or some party on her behalf, usually her parents. As a means of seeking revenge, these characters typically seek to cause disorder by attempting to thwart the plans of the main couple. We see this in Fatty and Mabel Adrift, where the son of the Perkins family, labeled the Hard Loser, schemes to disrupt the content lives of Fatty and Mabel in their seaside cottage. He goes to great lengths to achieve this, pushing their house out into the sea during a storm. While not as imperative to the storyline, we can still identify this specific character trope in On His Wedding Day. Oswell stumbles upon Mabel's character, who seems to already be involved with another man, but quickly shifts her liking to Oswell. The rejected suitor then pays a group of men to beat Oswell up. Although he doesn't play a huge part, he is still significant in being responsible for inciting the chaos that follows. Thirdly, there is the example in Shot in the Excitement. Failing to win the affection of the girl, he rigs a booby trap on a park bench to fire a cannon at his rival. Of course, from these examples, we can see that they are never successful in their schemes, but they do offer an alternative storyline to follow and act as the primary conflict in Keystone comedies. The next character archetype I want to mention that frequently appears in Keystone films is the group of criminals. They're usually there for the purpose of either helping the antagonist in their schemes, or simply adding another layer to the havoc and excitement, the latter usually being a result of the first reason. One clear use of this trope is in Fatty and Mabel Adrift, when the neighbor's son enlists a gang of villains to help him do his dirty work. Here, the trope is outlined in an obvious manner for comedic effect, in giving the ringleader a name such as Brutus Bombastic and a business card detailing his line of work. These characters typically have no connection to the lead characters. Most of the time, characters just stumble into their presence. Another example of this can be found in A Grocery Clerk's Romance, where the lazy drunk husband happens to stagger into the same vicinity as the conspirators. In this case, they don't serve to help the antagonist, but rather create mayhem in the town by tying him to a tree with a stick of dynamite. Using this specific character trope leads to similar narrative structure because the activity of the criminals are useful for building up tension, confusion, and disorder that results in the big chase at the end in which Keystone comedies are famous for. As Douglas Riblet suggests, quote, Keystones adjusted the tempo across the course of the film for effect, building to the most rapid cutting and action toward the end of the film, end quote. Speaking of which, Keystone Cops are the last and probably most commonly known character archetype that I'd like to touch on. In an online piece written by Jeffrey Vance, adapted from his novel Chaplin, Genius of the Cinema, he states that, quote, a situation typically led to some sort of rally or chase, explosion, or the principal characters falling into a lake." End quote. 
We can see three similar examples reflected in On His Wedding Day with the chase, shot in the excitement with an explosion, and Fatty and Mabel adrift with the principal characters falling into a body of water, all of which have the Keystone Cops in tow. Although they are never the main focus of the film, they always appear at the climax and are meant to represent a state of heightened chaos. To conclude, it is evident that Keystone uses repetitive character combinations that result in predictable narrative arcs. The flawed man always falling in love with the wrong woman, the jealous suitor seeking revenge, the group of criminals looking to cause trouble, and the Keystone cops are just a few key archetypes in these films. All in all, these character patterns give Keystone a well-defined, unique, structural approach to comedy that has contributed to their distinctiveness and influence within the slapstick and farce genre.